provided to the public and the press on January 7, 2020, and was posted on the bulletin board in the municipal building in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act, NJSA 10, semicolon 4 7. Roll call, please. Vice President Auburger? Here. Councilmember Murphy? Here. Councilmember Van Tassel? Here. Councilmember Weller? Here. Council President Shortway? Present. Can we all rise to salute the flag, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, we'd like to open it to public comments. Please note public comments are limited to three minutes per person on current agenda items only. May I have a motion, motion. to Second. Anyone want to come forward? Please come up, state your name and the area of town you're from, please. Hi, Margaret DeStassi, Silver Spruce. I just wanted to ask a question as to how much information are we going to be provided prior to the meeting uh, on all the resolutions? The, there was only titles here, no information about what each resolution is about. So are we supposed to uh, submit an Oprah on Fridays to get the information? Well, first of all, if you want to, we're not going to get in the habit of answering questions during public comments. Comments are going to be made at the end of the meeting. If council people want to answer that or if the attorney wishes to now, that would be fine. Thank you. What? The but, but the agenda should be posted with the resolutions. No, there's only only titles, not, no explanations. I went on and looked. There's nothing there. I'm looking at it right now, and they're all there. Re explanations? I was on there. There's no... Yeah, the resolutions are all there. They're there, but it's only titles, no explanations. No. Read it. It's only explanations. There's no no explanations. Only the one that had an explanation was the one about the veteran. All the others are titles only. Then it was changed this afternoon. If it's now there, because it was not there this morning. Okay, the, I apologize. I retract my but, question. But if you can't find them, please contact me beforehand, and we'll take care of it. Okay, thank you. you. Anybody else from the public? Seeing no one, may I have a motion to close? Motion. Second. Okay. Items for discussion. Would anyone uh, would want to talk about the Vernon Township MUA? Would anybody? Uh, I'm missing the minutes. Oh, the minutes. Okay. May I have a motion <coughs> to adopt the following minutes, December 9th, 2019. For the record, I was not on the council then, so I will. Abstain. Motion. Motion to adopt the minutes from Second. December 9th. Second. Roll call. Vice President Alberger. Yes. Council Member Murphy. Yes. Council Member Van Tassel. Yes. Council Member Weller. Do Please I need abstain. to abstain? Because yeah. 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 Abstain. Sorry, thank you. Okay. Motion. Passes. Motion carries. Items discussion, Vernon Township and MUA. Would anyone like to start? Say no one, I'll start. I feel now is the time to dissolve the Vernon Township MUA to allow Mayor Burrell the opportunity to oversee the wastewater system on a daily basis with the VTM UA director. That would be moved into a part-time position. The current commissioner should work as an ad hoc committee to advise the administration. Due to financial difficulties or mismanagement, the dissolution of the authority will be in the public interest and will serve the health, welfare, or convenience of the inhabitants of the local unit or units. And the dissolution will achieve a more efficient means for providing and financing local public facilities. Except that in order of dissolving the authority shall assume adequate provision in accordance with the security agreement or otherwise for all creditors of the authority. So what I'd like to do is propose a committee the committee will consist of myself and another council member. The council can decide on who that person would be. Two of the MUA commissioners, I know Paul Carney has already asked me that he be considered. The MUA CFO, who is also the township CFO. The MUA director, a member of the environmental commission, an independent water expert, and I've already asked Mike Fury if he would join. 
The membership will begin by becoming familiar with the following studies. The Vernon Sustainable Economic Development Plan, the Vernon TDR Feasibility Study, Vernon's Water Use and Conservation Management Plan, the Revised Net Water Availability Chapter, Vernon's Master Plan and the NRI, which has to be updated, the Remington and Varnick Sewer Expansion Feasibility Study, Sorenzo and Panero's Engineers Analysis of May 2008, Hatchmont McDonald Sewer Feasibility Report that was done in 2011. That would be the basis to start. The committee will explore the legal and financial ramifications by <clears throat> suggesting ordinances to cre create EDUs to reduce the deficit caused by the estimated 250,000 gallons a day of unused sewer allocation and to recharge clean water into the aquifer to reduce the current water deficit. The sewer obligation is one of the largest challenges confronting this township. And just saying we're going to do something isn't working. We need to actively look at doing this. I also would ask the committee to investigate the following. Move forward to replace pump house two. Adopt an ordinance requiring all septic systems to be pumped every three to five years. The time period would have to be determined. An RFP for a vendor to pump out all septic systems within the township borders. Wastewater is to be discharged into the new pump house, treated and injected into the aquifer. Will the vendor, we would put out an RFP for the vendor, see if we would realize savings by the vendor saving money in their transportation costs. We cannot charge less than SCUMA charges, so we would have to look for the savings some other place. We would see what the projected EDUs would be, projected savings for property owners, and es estimated on the deficit reductions of the water, debt service and bond rating effects. Will such actions stabilize the EDU rate? This report would be done by July 1st, 2020. So at this point, what I'd like to know if the council's interested in doing this, to have a committee, and who would like to sit on this committee and start investigating? Well, one of, one of the things um, to consider is during this entire Mountain Creek, um, I'll call it a debacle, we were advised um, not to really touch the MUA and disbanding. Correct. Now, as a matter of fact, and I know that supposedly when they filed Chapter 11, one of the items that actually protected Vernon Township was the fact that we had a utility um, and we were able to fall back on the utility laws. Now, I'm not sure what that would do. I mean, they're still not settled. Yes, I know we, on December 19th, our ordinance did finally get recorded. But where, do, where does the township stand with disbanding and what's to prevent them from doing this again? And if they do this again, even though we have that ordinance in place, where does the township stand? The committee would have to investigate this. Right, but I'm just saying is we've already paid the attorneys all of this money and they made this recommendation because this is, just so everyone knows, this is a discussion that we've been having for years over disbanding. And it just turned out that it was not the favorable thing to do because of the whole situation. So it's just a matter of if we do look at moving towards that, I mean, our attorneys should be able to advise us, our bankruptcy attorneys, all the attorneys that were involved in this, on what should happen. I mean, as, instead of us going and looking, let them come back and tell us. I mean, we've just put them all back on. We just voted to, you know, reinstate all these attorneys because it's not done. But, but I, I don't think we can act because what Mountain Creek may do. What I found the problem when I was mayor, you're in charge, fiduciary duty of the, the most expensive asset this town has. The you, uh, authority meets once a month and then the decision. But I, I believe the mayor needs to have the ability to make decisions. He's in charge of this asset. I, he I doesn't really maintain it. He doesn't operate it. But it's the township's asset and not the uh, municipal authority. But my, my only question is, are we exposing the township are we exposing the township? Because you and I, we've had these discussions right back to 2016, mm -hmm. you know, when I brought forward having some kind of a, a dumping station. And, and all these, a lot of these things that you're bringing up, these were all part of the discussions. This is not new to the council. But it's just a matter of proceeding cautiously because what we thought of, and I know there's people in the audience, we thought it was a good idea at first to disband to be able to have control over it. But we soon found out 
that that would have probably killed the town because they could have probably acted on that. And so you want to see if there's a legal opinion, what their legal opinion is if we disband in case Mountain Creek goes <clears throat> Chapter 11 in the future. Right. I mean, where, where does that leave us? I mean, they, I know they, they pay to the MUA. Their payments are made to the MUA, which, you know, what happens with all of that? You know, I mean, I have no problem getting a legal opinion, yeah. but I want to start taking action. Well, it's still, I, it, it may sound, it may sound very, it may sound good to be able to have control over, you know, all the assets. But again, you still have to know, like I said, we just went through all of this with, um, you know, with this legal fiasco that uh, we really need to have a legal opinion while it's still fresh on their minds. Council, how would we best go forward with that? I really think there's two issues here. One is a committee to investigate whether or not the MUA should be disbanded or not. The second is, if it is disbanded, what is the legal effect of that under the Mountain Creek Agreement? Those are, as I see them, two separate and distinct what? things. We're happy to provide, if the council would like us to provide an opinion on the effect of disbanding the MUA on the Mountain Creek Agreement, happy to do it. Well, that'll be coming from our, the bankruptcy attorneys? It can come from probably both of us. I mean, I'm just because all of the, um, you know, Mo Bauer, Lou Madunio, they were all, you know, very involved in this um, because, like I said, that could be a uh, change like that, like I said, could hurt us. And then, because isn't that a long process also? I mean, to prepare a legal opinion? No, no, no. I mean, to look, for, look into disbanding. Doesn't there have to, there has to be an approval too. Uh, if ultimately, the committee is formed or the council determines to disband the MUA, there's a statutory process that would have to be followed. Is that something that has to go before the local finance board? It, it very well may. I, I'd have to take a look at that. Yeah, but I believe it does on the readings I've had. But then we look at Pump House 2. Who's going to control Pump House 2, how it's going to get done? Is it going to be the mayor's team or is it going to be the MUA's team? And I prefer since the township owns the asset, it's the mayor that does this. Well, that pump house should have been. Yes, we know. But we need to move forward. I mean, it's been since 2008. I would be happy to sit on the committee since I think out of the council members here, I probably have the most knowledge. Okay. Are we Not if, but if anybody yeah. else Are we wants not? it, they can have it. So can I have a motion? We'll go forward with this committee. Yes, we'll make yes. a motion. Yep. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We have one Second. who would be Second. the other. Would you, as council president, be on it? Yes, I would like to be on okay. it too since I was involved with it. And I have the perspective of where the mayor is and what the frustration is when you have this asset and you can't do anything about it, whether it's even maintaining the easements. Well, so uh, I want to make it easier for you. Oh, that's good. And, and uh, again, I appreciate you allowing me to, to, to just to make some comments here. Are, uh, you know, we, I, I've heard that the MUA is mismanaged. I don't know that's the case or not and uh, I know we have a significant sewer obligation and I agree with your statement we need to take action we need to, we just need to stop stewing about this and talking about what somebody else did back when and what have you we really need to take action and I, I like your recommendation mr. president your recommendation is not that we just do something now right away without looking at it but I like the idea of the committee Let's look at it and see what our obligations are. See what the pluses and the minuses are. And then let's see where we go. One of the things that I do know that the current situation that we have as it relates to our sewer system is really not sustainable. We've got, you know, we've got a sewer system that is supposed to be able to benefit the entire town. And yet we've got a small group, a very, very small group of our citizens that are paying a lot of money related to this. It's on them. And that's not fair, and it's not really sustainable. Well, can that be changed? I don't really know, but I think that we really need to look at that. And I'll tell you, uh, from the standpoint of, of the mayor, our, if this is our resource, I most certainly am not opposed to managing it, you know, with the right uh, uh, support and advice and what have you. But we need to be able to do, go forward and do things in a cost-effective and efficient manner. And I really think that your suggestion here of putting together a committee is the right thing to do. Uh, as, as the attorney said, that the committee is really just to propose if there are statutory processes we've got to go through, there are checks and balances that will keep us from going off on the deep end. So I think we should do this, and I'm glad to see you do it. Thank you. And what about having the attorneys um, give us their 
recommendation, their opinion. I, I most certainly have no objections to that. You know, if you've got attorneys that you're paying, I think you'd be foolish not to get their recommendation, their well, opinion. But I think to. they should give that to the committee. That's well, what I would assume. Right, Is that what you're asking? We would have to pay our um, bankruptcy attorneys. That they, they, they're not on retainer. And they're the ones that um, we have retained them because it's not over. So we have retained them. But they're not on a retainer. So we would have, they would be paid for their, their opinion. But like I said, they were the ones doing this. They were the ones involved. They're the ones that could best. Well, we could have Mr. Selinsky's firm or, uh, research it and see where it goes from there. Well, you still need the, you still need the input from the bankruptcy attorneys. Then we'll uh -huh. need a resolution to open up the contract for them, right? Yeah, because but I, we did we did pass a resolution. They to did have it at, them. The, at the rear. We already did so that at still rear. Bring it in. Okay. We, it would uh -huh. just be that the so me, that the uh, MUA would have to do the same thing with Mo Bauer. Well, Council Mormon and Council President, I'm most certainly am in favor of the committee. And if there are other discussions that need to be made to ensure that we do this in a cost-effective, efficient manner from the standpoint of attorney, I'm open to sitting down, having those kind of discussions, to see how we best go forward okay. without hurting ourselves. So I'll go forward. I'll put the committee together. Uh, Gene, you'll serve with me. And then I'll ask the, for another commissioner. And uh, we'll take it from there. Yeah. Let's uh, explore it. But let's really put a hard deadline, July 1st, 2020. Let's report back to the council and the public what we found out. And any time this committee wants to meet with me or, or because of the things that I might have to do in terms of helping authorize, I'm, I'm open for it. And will you be reaching out to the MUA? Yes. To see if, that's, if, if they'd like to have Mo. Some of the MUA com commissioners have already contacted me and said, if you can, we should be dissolved. No. They understand the frustrations of meeting once a month, and we're sitting here on our hands. Well, it's just like I said, it's just proceeding cautiously because... With due diligence. We were, and it was, like I said, it was a conversation we had, and it was the attorneys recommended we not touch it at that time. So I'd just like to know if anything's changed in their minds. Well, you know what, well, Mr. President and Council, it, it, what's really interesting to me, I'm kind of, you know, I've been mayor now, this is 13 days. It's interesting though, uh, I have had conversations with commissioners saying they should be resolved. And I, you know, it's strange. It's like, really? You know, I thought that you would be the strongest support. There are lots of things here that I realize that are unknown and unknowable to me at this point in time. This is why I'm glad to see this committee report uh, approach because our, I, I really want to hear an awful lot about what's going on and what has led us all to this point where we've got a situation where nobody's pleased with what we've got. It's true. Cool. It appears nobody's pleased with what we've got. And, and, you know, sometimes when you throw things into a committee, that's a way of prolonging things and not doing anything. But in this case, I think that's exactly what we need. Hey, we're okay with that. We'll move forward. Okay. Consent agenda. Resolution 20-47, Total Disabled Vet Veteran. This resolution authorizes a total disabled veteran tax exemption. Resolution 20-48, Resolution Accepting the Completion of Road Improvement Project to Warwick Turnpike. This resolution accepts the completion of the Road Improvement Project to Warwick Turnpike. Resolution 20-49, Authorizing Change Order Number 1 of the Contract for Proposed Improvements of line striping to Higgins Drive and Walshway with Denville line painting. This resolution authorizes a change order of contract for proposed improvements of the line striping to Higgins Drive and Walshway with Denville line painting. Resolution number 20-50, authorizing change order number one of contract for proposed improvements of line striping to Lake Pochung Road with Denville line painting. This resolution authorizes a change order of contract for proposed improvements of line striping to Lake Pochunk Road with Denville line painting. Resolution number 20-51, resolution authorizing fireworks to be displayed on February 3rd, 2020 within the township of Vernon. This resolution authorizes fireworks to be displayed on February 3rd, 2020 within the township. Resolution number 20-52, resolution adopting a domestic violence policy. This resolution authorizes the adoption of a domestic violence policy. Resolution number 20-53, resolution authorizing agreement with the Vernon Police Athletic League 
to administer and run recreation programs. This resolution authorizes an agreement with the Vernon Police Athletic League and to run recreational programs. Resolution number 20-54, resolution authorizing the execu execu execution of a shared service agreement between the Township of Wanage and the Township of Wanage Fire Department and Township of Vernon. This resolution authorizes the execution of a shared service agreement between the Township of Wanage, the Township of Wanage Fire Department, and the Township. Resolution number 20-56, resolution accepting the completion of road improvements project to Higgins Drive and Walsh Way. This resolution accepts the completion of a road improvement project to Higgins Drive and Walsh Way. Resolution 20-57, authorize the reward of a required disclosure contract with SREC resources for purchase of the communications backup generator. This resolution authorizes the award of a contract with SREC resources for the purchase of a com communications backup generator. Resolution number 20-58, transfer resolution, balance of transfers. This resolution authorizes a balance transfer. Resolution number 20-59, authorizing contracts with certain approved state contract vendors under T0155 and T0142. This resolution authorizes contracts with certain approved state contract vendors. Resolution number 20-60, authorizing contracts with certain approved Sussex County Cooperative contract, contact vendors. This resolution authorizes contracts with certain approved Sussex County Cooperative contract vendors. Resolution number 20-61, authorizing the collective bargaining agreement with New Jersey State Policemen's Benevolent Association, Local 285, Vernon Township. This resolution authorizes the collective bargaining agreement with the New Jersey State Policemen's Benevolent Association, Local 285. May I have a motion to adopt resolutions 20-47 to 20-61. I have two questions, actually. On the um, resolution 2054, that's just for the antenna? That's because <clears throat> that's with the fire department, with wantage? That's just for use because they put that on our... Yes. On our tower. There's a stipulation in the shared service agreement. Should they sometime decide not to renew our shared service agreement, that there would be an annual charge for, for them to have, so, for it to be on so the tower. So this 15000 is because they did both Sussex and Wantage went to the county 911, That's right? correct. So this 15000 is just for them to have that on our tower. Correct. Okay. And the other is the $16,000 transfer from the police department to finance. What is that for? Uh, that was resolution 2058. Uh, yeah. I'm not sure, I'm not exactly sure what it would be specifically. I thought the uh, CFO was going to be here tonight. Yeah, it says she finance, uh, police department salary and wages, 16000 mm -hmm. to finance salary and wages, 16000 Okay. I believe that's okay. to cover the $15,000 that was removed back in okay. May, right, to recreation for the salaries because we had the desk audit done. Is that what it's for? It sounds like for it recreation. probably is. We removed $15,000 last April or May. Baseball asked for it, the extra money. We took that money out of finance, gave it to recreation. Mm -hmm. There was a desk audit done that in finance, and now there's a difference in salary. I believe that's what it's for, but uh, if you need to confirm that with the CFO, please do. I believe you're right. We most certainly can do that. Yeah. All right. Thank you. That's all. So we, we don't have a motion yet. No, we need the motion. Yes. Ask motion. for a motion. Motion. Do we have a second? Second. second. Roll call. Vice President Orberger. Yes. Council Member Murphy. Yes. Council Member Van Tassel. Yes. Council Member Weller. Yes. Council President Shortway. Yes. Motion carries. And we will get you that information, Council Member Murphy. We will. Thank you. Okay, introduction. First reading of proposed ordinances. Ordinance 20-02. Ordinance extending lease agreement between the Vernon Township Board of Education and the Township of Vernon 
and sublease agreement between the Township of Vernon and the Dog Owners Gathering Society of Vernon Township for certain unimproved real property identified on the official tax maps of Township of Vernon as Block 308, Lot 2, Old Block 133, 2.05. This ordinance extends a lease agreement between the Board of Ed, the Township, and the DOGS dogs for certain unimproved real property. May I have a motion to introduce 20-02 with a public hearing to be held on January 27, 2020. Motion. Second. Second. Roll call, please. Vice President <clears throat> Auburger? Yes. Council Member Murphy? Yes. Council Member Van Tassel? Yes. Council Member Weller? Yes. Council President Shortway? Yes. Motion carries. Ordinance. 20-03, ordinance amending the salary ordinance for non-union employees. This ordinance amends the salary ordinance for non-union employees. May I have a motion to introduce 20-03 with a public hearing to be held on January 27, 2020. I, I've seen that also. Um, my copy did not have all of the information on it, but I went online and I added. Did the rest of the council have all the information on it? No, the community affairs is cut off. It's uh, yeah, you don't have community affairs on yours, and you don't have the part-time municipal officer, uh -huh. uh, which is the OEM coordinator. So that's not on your on your ordinances. No. So you don't have that information on your ordinance. Chuck, do you have that information? Well, we I just have it. I'm just saying you oh. don't have it, so you're 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 no. introducing something. And you don't have a copy of it. What was I didn't have the OEM package. and the OEM and, and recreation director. The director of community affairs, recreation supervisor, um, the part time under municipal offices, the OEM coordinator. It is online. I was going to say because right? I thought it, I, I saw it online. Who did not get it exactly? Well, it's in our it's copies. It's not there. If you read it's it online, just, it's cut off. It got cut off. It's cut off on the, both sides. Okay. There's a print yeah. in here, I think. Okay. I'm just trying to see. I don't have the copy that we were working from to to do it. I only have what I was what I got from uh, the clerk, which is pretty much the same package. <laughs> Um, if you want, I can probably go to my office and find out what it, what what they you're looking no, for, what they were, and what they are. I'm just are. saying I have it, but I'm just okay. I'm I'm asking the council if okay. they have it, if they looked at it, yeah. because they don't have the information and they're voting on it. Well, I read it online. Oh. But the, what, I'm not a paper person. I, I, you know, I'm not. If, if, if Mr. President, if I'm interjecting it, I shouldn't. Well, it's, it's your meeting, and I understand that. But I, I think what we're really saying here is that. Uh, do we want to introduce it now that they know what it is? That's, those are two or three lines on it. Do we want to introduce it if the council? Can if, we just move forward somehow? Can we give that to them and let them, we discuss it. I, 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 vote I, on it? Actually, I'll, I'll say yes. I think this is council business to discuss. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. But I'm just saying is that you, you don't have it, so I don't have it in front of me now. No, but like I said, it's it's just a matter of whether or not you want to see what it is, or if you want to hold it to the end and somebody can get us copies. If you have a copy, do you want me to run, run over there and make a copy of it? No, I wrote down you what did. I found online. Okay. I can make copies in the next room if they need to review it. Does council need a moment, uh, a moment to uh, digest the information? Well, I just have a question quick. Uh, I thought we had... Um, Going over the salary ordinance last year and had readjusted it for contracts and all that. Um, is that already out of? Are we doing this just because we have to stay within the contracts or are we just bumping everything up automatically? 
in discussions with the mayor, it gives the mayor the ability to retain employees, to attract new employees, and gives him the ability to run day-to-day -day operations and set salaries as the mayor sees fit. Hmm. We set the parameters, the mayor does the day-to-day. -day. Then, if you wouldn't mind, Mayor, I'd like to speak to you after, not during the week okay. about some of the issues with the ordinance. Okay. So can we have a motion? Can we introduce this second and we'll vote on it? Introduce it. Thank you. Motion? Motion. Do I have a second? Okay. No one's willing to second it? I'll second it. Roll call, please. Vice President Orberger? No. Councilmember Murphy? No. Councilmember Van Tassel? Yes. Councilmember Weller? Yes. Council President Shortway? Yes. Motion carries. Okay. Ordinance 20 04. Ordinance of the Township of Vernon, County of Sussex, State of New Jersey, creating Chapter 476 of the Municipal Code of the Township of Vernon entitled Short Term Rentals. This ordinance creates Chapter 476 of the Township Code entitled Short Term Rentals. May I have a motion to introduce 20 04 with a public hearing to be held 27 2020? Motion. Second. Second. Roll call, please. Vice President Orberger? Yes. Councilmember Murphy? Uh, no. Councilmember Van Tassel? Yes. Councilmember Weller? Yes. Council President Shortway? Yes. Did any of you read this? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I guess we'll leave the questions up for next motion. Motion carries. <laughs> Ordinance dash. 20, or ordinance number 20-05, an ordinance of the Township of Vernon, County of Sussex, State of New Jersey, amending Chapter 509 of the Municipal Code of the Township of Vernon, entitled Taxation to Include Transient Accommodations. This ordinance amends Chapter 509 of the Township Code, entitled Taxation to Include Transient Accommodations. May I have a motion to introduce 20-05 with a public hearing to be held on January 27, 2020? Motion. Second. Roll call, please. Vice President Orberger? Yes. Council Member Murphy? No. Council Member Van Tassel? Yes. Council Member Weller? Yes. Council, Council President Shortway? Yes. Motion carries. Public comments, uh, limit to three minutes on any topic. Please note public comments are limited to three minutes per person. May I have a motion to open the floor to the public? Motion. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone wish to address the council? Ms. Palladini? Good evening. Good evening. Give me one second here. Okay. I don't usually read from a script, but because um, I feel this is so important to put it all on the record, I'm going to do so tonight. And um, my only purpose in speaking tonight is because I sincerely want to see my town go back to the legal and statutory operations of all departments, boards and committees, municipal employees, as well as elected and appointed officials. I hope that if I go over the three minutes, as you can see, there's no one beating your door to come up and speak. You might give me an extra minute or two just to finish. Ms. Palladini, I'm going to yes. hold you three minutes because I do not want to set a new precedent. So please move on forward and reduce the time that I just spoke, please. Okay, that's fine. But just so the record shows that on many occasions, 
you have extended public comment to members of the public to 10, 15, 20 minutes, even a half hour. But if that's your precedent, I will stick to that tonight, Thank you. as well as anyone else who ever comes up to speak. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Mayor Burrell had some excellent comments when he was sworn in on January 1st, and I want to commend him for those comments. One of the things he addressed was the lack of official minutes of our town boards. After the mayor's comments, Councilwoman Jean Murphy implied that it was up to the administration to be in charge of the minutes. Um, she insisted it was the administration's responsibility. Well, of course, any administration or governing body should ensure that the municipality and its operations are exercised and carried out appropriately, but it is clearly the responsibility of the township clerk. And I want to say at this time to our new township clerk, this is in no way, shape, or form having to do with you. I'm not criticizing you. I'm not complaining about you. You're brand new. What I'm talking about is a problem that has occurred for years in our township now. So um, the Citizen Service Act is just one statute that outlines the responsibilities of the municipal clerk. Uh, that is NJSAC 40A colon 9-92. I'm referring to the mandatory requirements for a municipal clerk in this New Jersey state statute. These are not the only statutes that have been violated over the past four years. There are many others pertaining to the roles and responsibilities of the mayor and council, but tonight I'm focusing only on the municipal clerk. According to C40A colon 9-9.2, the clerk is the custodian of the Citizen Service Act. Among the duties of the clerk are the following. Maintaining a directory of local authorities, boards, and commissions. The clerk of the municipality shall compile and maintain on an ongoing basis a directory of these authorities. This should be include, but not be limited to, the name of the authority board or commission, the number of members or positions, a list of currently appointed members along with their terms of office, and she's supposed to create a log. Now, at the end of the year, in November, I asked to see copies of those logs, and I was told by our former clerk that none existed. The clerk is also supposed to monitor vacancies, the general frequency of meetings, and I'm reading right from the state statutes, the appointing authority and the enabling statute, ordinance, or resolution of any. One of the requirements of the Citizen Service Act is that all persons wanting to volunteer for an appointed position must first fill out a volunteer application and submit it to the clerk. The purpose of this is to ensure that all residents have a fair and equal opportunity to serve on our boards. On so many occasions, this was not even done. Either dozens of people didn't even fill out applications, or they filled them out like this, which is nothing filled out, just the name on top and a signature on the bottom. And this occurred in dozens of uh, occasions. Um, so the same persons were appointed to all, all of our township boards again and again and again. And by the way, the form is part of the state statute. It's mandatory. It's not something that might be nice to do. It's mandatory. Another problem that we had on our town boards was that there was chronic absenteeism. Yet C40A colon 9-12.1 was never implemented, and that states Vacancy deemed on resignation, incapacity, death, residence, absence, failing to attend and participate at meetings for a period of eight consecutive weeks or for four consecutive regular minutes. That was never followed. My biggest concern, however, is that in the last four years, we have had no meeting minutes, none. You may not be aware of it, but state law requires that the township maintain a website and it also requires pursuant to NJSA 40 colon 56A-4.1 that all meeting notices and meeting minutes shall be posted to the township website. Now, when I was recording secretary for the MUA, the Environmental Commission, and the Historic Preservation Commission for many years, there was never a time, not ever, 
that the very next day that minutes were approved, I did not submit them to Pavia, our webmaster, for posting on the website the very next day after the minutes were approved. However, this has not been the case. There are no minutes on our township website, really. Economic development, no minutes whatsoever. Environmental commission, no minutes since September 2019. And before that, there are no minutes for all of 2018. The MUA sewer utility, no minutes since June 20th, 2019. These are all violations of the law, and I'm obviously going to run out of time. And I still have a page of things, so I guess I won't read them. Maybe I'll put them in an email and send it to all of you. But um, to skip forward a little bit, there are core duties of the township clerk. One is custodian of the municipal seal. Number two, maintain custody of all minutes. Books, deeds, bonds, contracts, and archival records of the municipal corporation. The clerk is supposed to maintain these. You have to have minutes on the website. Not only are there not minutes on the website, but if you put in an Oprah request, you can't even get them because they don't exist. And this is why I'm saying this has nothing to do with you. So these are all the responsibilities of the township clerk. And in the last four years, what we have done is we have increased the number of employees in the township clerk's office. We have significantly decreased her responsibilities, but we have significantly increased her salary. Well, you don't really have the authority to say, I don't think the clerk should do this and I don't think the clerk should do that, because the core duties of the municipal clerk are outlined in NJSA 40A colon 9-133. And the clerk is responsible for these things. And in our township, this has not been done. And I'm concerned. Again, I'm not going to try to rush to um, finish because I'm not going to finish. But, you know, I took a look at the um, New Jersey Herald legal notices. The clerk is supposed to do legal notices. When did that change? That changed two years ago when I was the Environmental Commission secretary and I tried to submit a public <coughs> notice because the Environmental Commission had voted to have a special meeting and I was told I could not do that. That all legal notices now had to go through the mayor's office and the business administrator. Mr. Volker sent me an email. But if you look in the New Jersey Herald, and I have a whole stack of them here, you'll see that legal notice after legal notice. Township clerk, Kristen Ships, acting municipal clerk, Linda Knott, municipal clerk, Amanda Laban, municipal clerk, over and over and over. My concern is that we don't have the choice of what these statutory positions require. It's state statute. And this town has not been following those state statutes for the past four years. And I wanted to specifically respond to Ms. Murphy saying, that's administration. It's not administration. Every one of you sitting up there, including the mayor, should be concerned about whether or not minutes are being done, whether they're being posted to the website. But it's the responsibility of the clerk to do them. In the 40 years that I've lived in Vernon Township, I have not known of a single clerk not Pat Wykoski, not Robin Klein, who has not done the minutes of the council meetings. But now we're putting <coughs> somebody else to do those minutes. It's the job of the clerk. Thank you. Would anybody else like to make a comment? Come on up. Does that have to be regarding short-term uh, residences? That you can say good? anything at this time. Three minutes, please. Announce your name and where you live, please, for the area. Thank you. Good evening, and thank you for your time. I'll be brief. Uh, my name is William Ruffing. I live in Highland Lakes, New Jersey. Could you spell uh, your name, please? Sure, Ruffing, R-U-F-F-I-N-G. Thank you. You got it. Um, I live next to an unsupervised short-term rental that allows groups of up to 10 people, but often has groups of 15, 12 to 15 people. 
The owner on record uh, lives in Maryland. The management company that manages it is located in Colorado. Uh, the home and the home six houses farther up um, are actually groups of people that pool their monies together and buy houses solely for the purpose of using them as commercial real estate. Uh, the groups they rent to, of course, are vacationers. Um, so now I have a group of people that changes every few days. They arrive with a vacation mindset, uh, living next to my family year-round. Uh, a residential neighborhood used to be families, where you would normally, the people would work 50 weeks of the year, take two weeks vacation, their kids would go to school with my kids, they would take vacations, you know, as I said, maybe two weeks a year. You knew who your neighbors were. Simply put, since the change in ownership and change of use in 2019 to a short-term rental, I don't have a family living next to me anymore, but a hotel, a commercial business. Evolve, which is the vacation management company that manages these homes, brags that they are the lowest based uh, fee vacation property management company in the industry. They charge 10% commission. My question is how stringent is their vetting policies? They book through all hotel booking sites, Airbnb, Trivago, Kayak, Priceline, etc. I have, of course, issues that this brings to mind, which are security and community safety issues. First off, there is no vetting other than a credit card of the person who rents or pays for the property. What about the other guests? I have daughters, I have granddaughters. I'm certain most of you would feel uncomfortable with groups of 10 or more men renting a house next to your home. Over the past year, there have been bachelor parties, bachelorette parties, and even a wedding in December. This is not a family renting a house. <coughs> Simply put, it's commercial use of residential property. It's not a person renting out a room in their home. It's not a family trying to sell their home who needs money till they can sell it. This is a commercial undertaking by venture capitalists who are putting money together as an investment in commercial real estate, but in residential areas. Highland Lakes is a private residential community. Not only do we pay taxes, but we pay dues as well. I have at least a dozen pictures I wanted to submit. Bachelorette party, van dropping off 15 people, blocking my driveway, cars parking in my driveway, People at 3.50 in the morning at the base of my driveway smoking cigarettes, hanging out. They're on vacation. They have a vacation mindset. I understand what that is, but it doesn't have to be in my neighborhood. Blocking my property. These are all different dates and they're all stamped as you'll see the times and, and dates that these occur. Uh, once again, car looking for the property at 12.05 a.m. Wakes up our house. They're looking for the house next door, not our house. I have a German Shepherd. She obviously is aware when somebody's on our property, wakes up the entire house. Some of us do have to go to work, some of us have things we have to do the next day, we're not on vacation permanently. Another party, once again, at least 12 cars. This is the wedding, people walking onto our property, blocking the main road, which one of the main problems is, the road I live on is a very narrow, one lane road. You have cars blocking the road, it's also the first house on an island of which there's 13 other properties. If they're blocking the road and, God forbid, an emergency occurs and vehicles cannot get through when minutes count, you could end up in a tragedy. I'm hoping that never does, but it's becoming a concern to me. Once again, people parking in the street, they don't care. They block things. Tell them that you have to move. You're blocking the street. They don't care. These people didn't speak English. So obviously there was a language barrier. The amounts of cars from that same wedding. Next issue, the amount of garbage that these events create, which of course waste management won't pick up all that garbage, in which case then it gets dragged around the neighborhood, then you have bags of garbage that animals get into and dragged throughout my property as well as my neighbor's property. Enclosed also is what they advertise is what their property has all to offer, all the amenities, etc. So I was hoping if I could submit this please, and then I'll be brief to finish up and not take too much of your time. Um, I think it's wrong that you should sell out, not sell out the residents, but I think it's wrong that Vernon was considering charging $500 per one of these houses for the 230 approximate houses that the paper stead are in this area. That's about $125,000 a year. I think that's a, a small price that, or I guess it's a large price on your part that I have to pay because now I'm allowing people to have a hotel running next to my home, a home that's been in my family for three generations bought back in the 1950s by my grandfather who was an immigrant. Our streets are narrow, once again, it's a dead end lane, or it's a dead end road, there's one way in, one way out. It puts the other 12 houses at risk as I've stated. 
What I think should be allowed, once again, if you want to use short-term rentals for condominiums, if you want to use them for apartment complexes, which are basically already commercial residences, that would be fine. But I don't understand how a hotel is in keeping with the neighborhood aesthetics. Renting your home to a family on an annual basis, that's fine. I've done that in my younger years. But everybody in the house has to be registered. You have to have a certificate of occupancy for each of those persons. They're on a list. People coming in and out of the property on a regular basis, I don't know who these people are. And once again, it's a risk to my family. If any of your board members have the pleasure of living next to a short-term rental, you would know it is not pleasurable. So, and I would think you would all not want that next to your house and next to your home and next to your family. So once again, just to summarize, and the other thing is that it's 10 people in a home, which to me seems too many people on a property that's less than a half acre, and all the other properties are about a quarter acre. So we're on top of each other, and you have 10 people plus, sometimes 12, sometimes 15, that once again are here with a party atmosphere. Having a bachelorette party. It's lovely, I used to live in a fraternity house. I'm in my 50s now, I don't like having it as my neighbor. So once again, I think it's a commercial use in my opinion. It's a hotel. It's inappropriate for the neighborhood. There's security issues as you're putting local homeowners at risk. There's no vetting of the guests. I don't know if these people are criminals. If they're thieves scoping out the neighborhood, they're pedophiles. There's safety issues. What if they set the woods on fire, set the homes on fire on the island? Who's going to pay? Do I have to chase the people out in Colorado? Do I have to find the owner on record who's down in Maryland? The garbage issues. Once again, take 10 people plus make a commercial amounts of garbage. It's not residential use. And last but not least, and this happened even just as recent as yesterday, I'm sorry, last week. People bring their pets. It advertises no pets. Pets get loose. Pets run around. Pets go up and down the street unchecked. It's unregulated. And I consider it a problem, and I would hope that you would not allow it in residential areas. Thank, Thank you, you very you. much for your time, and congratulations on everyone who's new. Mr. Ruffing, um, electronically, can you forward those uh, photographs to us Oh, I can do that as well. Do you want the, you don't want the hard copies? I can take the hard copies, It's up to you, too. if you'd prefer. You'd sure. Yeah, yeah, if you just give them to the clerk so we could generate them. Thank you. Thank you. Does anybody else care to make a comment? Tom, come on up. I heard that. <laughs> I got a complaint. I've been complaining about this since 1984. Um, Tom, could you just state your name for the, the record, your last name? McClackery. It's M-C-C-L-A-C-H-R-I-E. First name, Thomas. Thank you, sir. Thank um, you, sir. <laughs> all right. You're not going to have a dialogue with me tonight. I can't hear you. Uh, and the sound system has really not improved since 1984, despite numerous objections or complaints from myself. That aside, uh, what I have for you tonight is the Platts property out on Barrett Road. This is the way beyond the tree farm. Now, uh, back in the day, this was a freed uh, slave black community. And there is a cemetery out there, and there was a church out there. You know, 155 years ago, we fought a war about this. Nobody can seem to find this cemetery. It's supposed to be on the Platts property, or maybe on the Platts property, and it's easily found by aerial photography. If you don't want to take people's word that the cemetery is there, then, you know, go and get the aerial photography, it'll pop out. Just look for a flat area with tombstones, and it'll tell you it's there. The tombstones apparently have been removed. You know, as I say, it's a freed slave community. And I'd like you at least to find the cemetery, and as a benefit, Stick a sign on the road and commemorate what they did. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else desire to make a comment? Seeing no one else, can I have a motion to close public comments? Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you. Mayor's report. 
Okay. Um, thank you, Mr. President and Council. You're welcome. Um, I'd just like to say to Mr. Ruffin and Tom, I don't, to Mr. Ruffin and Tom, I don't remember your last name, but I heard you. Um, lots of tough issues, but I heard you loud and clear, loud and clear. And I hope that you can hear me because when I was sitting out there, I could not hardly ever hear what was going on up here. So I'm going to try to talk loud. I, I want to take my opportunity to share four points with the council and with the public. I use point one for the purpose of reemphasizing and updating the council and the public on what the evidence shows is the overall, what I consider to be outstanding and very customer focused job that our town's tax assessor, uh, Ms. Kristen Umaski and her team have done and what they are continuing to do to implement our property revaluation that has been ordered by the Sussex County Board of Taxation and the New Jersey uh, Division of Taxation. Now I call this a uh, re-emphasis and update because much of this information is already on our website. On the Mayor Shortway's leadership, introductory letters plus an informational brochure concerning this property revaluation re was sent to all homeowners in March of 2019. Property evaluation inspections were conducted during April through December, and we started mailing out property value letters to property owners during the latter part of December. And I'm making a point of this because I think it's really important. This, 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 this influences uh, what people are going to be paying, what that property is, is worth and everything. And the mere fact that we're doing it in a customer-oriented manner, really, I think is really important. In those letters, owners were provided information as to how they could schedule a one-on-one -on -one meeting <coughs> with Realty Appraisal, which is the professional organization that our town contracted with to perform our property evaluation. So far, there has been, uh, there's not been a large number of, of uh, property owners who've uh, requested these one-on-one -on -one meetings with Realty Appraisal. But consistent with what we hope and what we plan to become an everyday marker of the type of service provided by Vernon Township, we have gone the extra mile to accommodate those that have requested these one-on-one -on -one meetings. Realty Appraisal has made themselves available for one-on-one -on -one meetings during 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. on Mondays through Fridays and from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. on Saturdays because we realize a lot of people work. At this point in time, we have scheduled uh, these one-on-one -on -one meetings to be available through January 25th. Um, so I hope that individuals who haven't gone to the website and who may watch this will, will hear this and will, will take advantage of these because it's really kind of important. Point two, when I made my authorized committee, board, and commission appointments on January 1st, I inadvertently made appointments to the Senior Citizen Committee for terms of just one year. In accordance with our town code, and I've been reading those, these appointments should have been for three years. And therefore, I'm hereby correcting this for the record by announcing that all of the individuals who are appointed to those boards for one-year terms are hereby appointed to the Senior Citizen Committee for three-year terms ending in 2022. Point three, our Greenway Advisory Committee, which is a special, an ad hoc committee which advises the mayor on matters of sustainability, passive recreation, and economics within the town, is authorized to have up to eight, in, eight vote, voting members. At the time that I made my appointments to this committee on January 1st, I had received only seven applications for appointments. I have now received an eighth application, and I'm hereby appointing Council President, the Honorable Harry Shortway, to a one-year term as the eighth member on that committee. And my final point, number four. In my first comments as your mayor on January the 1st, I expressed the confidence that this combined mayor and council would bring an end to our town's long negative, what I call political nightmare, which I quite frankly believe was fueled primarily not by people not loving or concerned about the town, but just personality-based things. And I have no doubt that each of our council members share my desire that we focus our comments and efforts on town issues and not on personalities. I have no doubt about that. 
And while we all cannot always agree on everything, as you see we didn't tonight, we won't. I am confident that as a collective governing body, we will be successful in finding a way to do what's best for the town. I've seen nothing to suggest to me that we won't. I hope that our town citizens who view this meeting, either in person or by a video format, will notice the difference in the tone and conduct of tonight's meeting. Because tonight's work by the council and mayor is just the first down payment on my promise to do what's necessary to bring our town together for the purpose of moving Vernon forward. Mr. President, council, thank you. You're welcome, sir. <clears throat> council comments. Ms. Murphy, would you start, please? Sure. Um, first of all, I'd just like to answer Ms. Palladini. While your story is a great one, it's not all accurate. And I'll just leave it at that. Um, but what I would like to actually bring up is the short-term rental ordinance. Um, on page three of it, it states, uh, short-term rental property means a residential dwelling unit that is used and or advertised for rent as a short-term rental for transient occupants as guests. Then it goes on to say, licensed bed and breakfast establishments, licensed room or boarding houses, hotels, motels, or property owned by a bank or other businesses association, a business association that has been subject of a foreclosure proceeding shall not be considered short-term rental property. So my question is, let's say the Appalachian Hotel, those units were purchased their condominiums, and what they did is they took this building and they put a front desk in it and they called it a hotel, but the units themselves are condominiums. So are they not, are they not allowed to rent them out as short-term rentals with this paragraph in it? Or do they fall under the hotel? Like what is, where do they, where do they, I mean, I, and I would even think that Minerals Hotel, which is over in Great Gorge Village, because individuals bought them as condominiums. They're called hotels. You can look at, you know, because I know that there was extensive discussion and there was something. Condominium is not a hotel or a motel. It's a separate, distinct form of ownership. So it would be subject to the regulations, in my opinion. Which would mean, but, you, but if you look at the land use board, you'll see that, well, the people bought them as condominiums. I, I, but I'm, I'm just saying, then they put, they put a, a front desk there. So if you privately own a unit in the Appalachian Hotel, you can rent it out through a short-term rental. This, or does it just? This would apply to you. So that, so you're saying they Just cannot. because the Appalachian Hotel calls itself a hotel does not mean it's a hotel. Well, you'd have to look at the land use board. And so I'm just, but what I'm saying is, with the Appalachian Hotel, are the owners allowed to rent them out in an Airbnb, or are they prohibited? Well, it because it's, well, it's right now the municipality has no regulation of short-term rentals but your question is would a condominium owner be subject to this regulation and it, in my view they would be regardless of whether it's in what is being called a hotel or called something else so just because they're in a building that calls itself a hotel does not mean it's a hotel because it's it's really it's a they call it a condo tell is what they really call it so that's that's the one issue with it then if you go to page six c3 a copy of the driver's license or state identification card of the owner confirming the short-term rental property is the owner's principal residence so mr ruffling Ruff, Ruff, wouldn't have an issue because if that home if the owner of that home, if it's not their primary residence, then they can't rent it out. Just From what I saw. Well, I'm, just, I'm reading something in here, so I'm just asking the attorneys. But that we're back to if it's a primary residence. Is that what we're not back to? If it's a no, primary so residence, you can't rent it out. I'm not really sure I understand your question. Number three, a copy of I, the I driver's... See, I see Okay, so... I see it. I don't so understand. what does that mean? I don't understand what your question is. What does that mean? Explain it that. It means exactly what it says. So if it's not your primary residence, you cannot put it in the short-term rental program. I 
I don't know that I would agree with that either, Mr. Well, then what is it? Th then explain it to me. <laughs> it is a it is a document that's required as part of the application process. A copy of the driver's license or state identification card of the owner confirming the short-term rental property is the owner's principal residence. Okay. I, I see that language. It's a so, document that's required as part of the application. So if it's not their primary residence, if they, if they fill out the application and they say, I own a home at 2200 Lakeside Drive East in Highland Lakes, mm -hmm. and their address is a Manhattan address, what does that mean? It means that that document that they're providing doesn't meet the requirement for the application. That's Which, what it means. So then that means they cannot rent their... That does not. I don't agree with that. Well, if it doesn't meet the application, then what's the point of the application? The application is provided other information that's listed in the order. That, that doesn't make any sense. If you're filling out, a, if you're just telling me that that, that component of the application isn't, it doesn't meet the requirements of the application, then how, how, could, how could it be okay? I'm, I'm sorry we disagree. Well, it's not that we disagree. I, I just don't think that your explanation okay. is... Did you read it? Anybody else read it any different? <clears throat> It just, no. that's what I'm saying. So, and number four, there's a number four, there's nothing there. Is that, it's just blank. Then you have here the number and location of all parking spaces available for the short-term rental. A short-term rental property shall designate one parking space for every bedroom available for rent. How's that going to be policed? That be police by the municipality. You know, it really is council comments, and you have every right to say whatever you want. Thank you. But this isn't a discussion or a debate, and you're I'm asking questions. Make the com make your comment. I, I don't like this. I don't like this. I don't like this. I think we should change that. I just asked after you voted whether or not you read it. Read it? I practically wrote it. Well, okay. <laughs> it's council I'll comments. I'll continue. Please. Number nine: the site plan showing all structures on the short-term rental property. The number and location of parking spaces available to the STR, a floor plan, which shall also the garage, if the garage is intended. There's words missing. Um, D, every short-term rental property shall be inspected biannually for compliance with the township's fire safety regulations and property maintenance code. In addition, each STR is subject to review to verify the STR's eligibility for use as an STR. Is there a fee for that? And that's, so I see that there's a lot of um, inconsistencies in that. I have no other comments. Thank you. No comments. No comment. No comment. Well, I would like the public to thank the public for their attendance tonight. And uh, Mr. Mayor, we're going to do the best working together. I think we are working together. Uh, I would also like the council in your spare time, if you could forward to me three or five objectives you'd like to see accomplished this year so I could, and Mayor, please also do this if yes. you have the time. Yes. So I can look for consensus. Let's nail some objectives down that we can accomplish this year and then within the two years. And I'll compile it and we could discuss it. And I'll discuss it in my next mayor, uh, comments so we can see where we can head and give the public an idea what direction we're going into. What is our main objectives here? What do we want to accomplish? With that, uh, my comments are finished. So may I have an adjourn? Uh, motion, motion to adjourn. <laughs> Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you.